So our next guest may look really familiar to you. You've seen him on Mixology, Mistresses, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. His name is Paul Alaya. He's a talented actor, comedian. Welcome. Thank you. I look familiar. So how, how did you get into acting? Uh, well, I was supposed to be in law school, and uh, um, I started doing a small productions, like a lot of short films and student films, and then uh, I was... I. I had two classes to take to graduate. I had an English class, no, I had an Arabic class and a math class. And I was, I joined an extras agency mm -hmm. because at the time, uh, this is in 2010, they were shooting a lot of films in Detroit and a lot of television shows. And one of the shows was called Detroit 187. Mm -hmm. And I was asked to be a stand-in for Michael Imperioli. Okay. Yeah, from The Sopranos mm -hmm. and uh, Goodfellas. He's, he's all over television. I can see that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we kind of look like, don't we? A little bit. A little bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, I don't know why I made that face, but uh, yeah, I did. I guess so. Um, he uh, so I told my parents that I'm going to take a semester off and work as a stand-in, mm -hmm. and uh, they weren't happy, but uh, I did it anyway, and it just uh, changed my life. I learned everything about acting from uh, being on set, and uh, Michael Imperioli, he's a uh, he's a really good man. Like he he'd do a scene and. I would uh, go up to him after the scene and say, hey, you know, I noticed you did this and you did this. Why did you do this? Mm -hmm. And he goes, well, Paul, the reason why I did this is because, you know, I'm investigating a crime. It was a cop show. He was playing a detective. Mm -hmm. He goes, I'm, uh, so I want to, I'm walking into the scene. I'm looking to see if there's anyone I can question over here. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, with the, there's windows over here. There's this over here. And he's telling me all these things that he's, uh, he does to get ready for the scene. And uh, just from watching him, I learned a lot. And uh, he was very helpful. And uh, he didn't have to tell me anything. He could have just said, hey, man, you might stand and get away from me, mm -hmm. you know? But uh, he, he was very helpful, him, James McDaniel, Sean Majumder, uh, a lot of really good actors on that show, uh, Aisha Hines, and they, they all really uh, took time to help me. Mm -hmm. So when the show was over, it was go back to school, and uh, I didn't want to do that, so. Tell us about your latest project, Dirty. Uh, Dirty's a feature film that uh, I produced and uh, starred in with uh, Roger Guinevere Smith, uh, Alexander Paul, Tony Dennison, Jason Stewart, uh, Chaz Bono. Uh, it was directed by my friend Dan Ringi. Uh, we're very excited about it. Uh, it's currently in post production and uh, we're submitting to some festivals. And uh, it's about two dirty police officers who try to get away with stealing uh, two million dollars of uh, drugs and money. I see. What was it like? How did you get Chaz Bono on? with you guys well how we got Chaz was uh, there was a role uh, it was a hoarder role and it was a very character -y role and at first uh, Dan uh, the director and I we wanted uh, Kane Hodder to, to do the part mm -hmm. and he was in uh, he's in a bunch of horror movies I don't know if uh, you probably recognize him you see him he was in uh, Jason Jason X mm -hmm. he's the guy that played Jason okay yeah so he wore a mask in most of his movies but uh, he's uh, he's a very very good actor and I worked with him before so we wanted him to do it, and then he couldn't do it, and then we had to find uh, someone to play it. So a friend of mine named Rick Ferrari, he uh, said, you know, you should let Chaz audition for it. He's uh, willing to audition. So um, Chaz came in and auditioned, and it was, uh, we auditioned a couple characters that day, and he was the best actor that came in, like, even the other characters, the other people that came in weren't as talented as he was. Mm. So uh, yeah, we uh, gave him the part and he does a phenomenal job. Fantastic. He's killing it. He's <laughs> killing it. I'm telling you, he's killing it. We can't wait to see it. Yeah. Where did you guys come up with the concept for Dirty? Well, um, I received the script two years ago. Okay. And I was in, uh, I believe it was near Oregon where I was shooting a film, uh, Crescent City, California actually. Mm -hmm. It's about 30 miles away from uh, Portland. Okay. And while I was there, the uh, assistant director, mm -hmm. his name is Dan Ringy, he was uh, the director of Dirty, uh, me and him became friends. And he sent me the script and said, hey man, uh, my friend wrote the script, his name is ben Benjamin Alexander. Mm -hmm. And they both worked valet together in Long Beach. So uh, Dan sent this, me the script and said, hey, there's this detective, you should look at this role. And I looked at the role and I just... I was like, you know, I'm, I'm going to play this part. Mm -hmm. And so I called Dan and said, Dan, I want to play this part. And he goes, all right, cool, man. Uh, we need about $200,000 now. <laughs> so once you get that, you can do whatever you want. 
So uh, the way we raised money was a um, interesting process. We uh, um, we shot a uh, trailer, a mock trailer, mm -hmm. and this is before Roger Winger Smith or Chaz Bono or Alexander Paul or any of them were in the picture. And um, also Adrian Gaeta stars in Dirty. He's a phenomenal actor, uh, really good actor. And this is before Adrian came into the picture, and we shot the. Uh, the trailer, mm -hmm. we put on Indiegogo, we got maybe seven, eight thousand dollars. We got, and it wasn't enough, obviously. So the director was doing AD jobs. Any money he had, he put into the uh, account. I was doing stand up. Um, any money that I made from stand up, I put into the account. I was doing shows in Chicago and wherever I could, and all the money I had, I put into the account. And then, um, Eventually, the writer's dad came through and uh, gave us some uh, some financing, and then a couple other fin uh, people that the writer's dad knew financed the film, mm -hmm. and uh, we made it happen. We're gonna take a break and take a look at the teaser for Dirty. Why don't you tell me why you became a police officer? A lot of bad people out there. And what people like you don't understand is just because you get your hands dirty, that doesn't always make you dirty. Got a live witness. He saw. No one. It's above the law. I'm not gonna go to prison. You know what they do to cops in prison? Is that another idea? I'm telling you. A guy. I knew that this whole black guy idea of yours was bad. So they gonna black me. Hello, detectives. Believe me, I can steal this from you. It's almost like you think we're the bad guys. So how did you prepare for this role in Dirty? Well, when I was working in Detroit as a stand-in, uh, Michael Imperioli's character was Detective Fitch, mm -hmm. uh, Detective Lewis Fitch, and it was, a, it was a cop show. And I really understood uh, the detective state of mind mm -hmm. and the detective objectives. So when I saw this role as a detective, I pulled a lot of what I learned from Detroit and put it into the, this character. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, like, and it's funny how things lead to one another. Mm -hmm. Like, I was a stand in in Detroit and I had no idea that I'd ever have to play a cop one day. And I pulled all this information that I got from being a stand in. And also, as a stand in, they let me say the lines, I'd act the lines. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't just stand in. And it was a performance. So, uh, when I looked at the character of uh, Detective Jackson, I saw a lot of Detective Fitch in that character. Mm -hmm. And,. Um, I was doing police ride-alongs. Really? Yeah, I did a bunch of those. I was watching uh, interrogation tactics. I read uh, the police manual. Of, mm -hmm. like, uh, um, I went to a firing range. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to know what it was like to uh, hold the weight of a gun. I wanted to know what it was like to uh, patrol the streets. Mm -hmm. So when I was doing ride-alongs, I'd actually walk with detectives and police officers would just patrol the streets. Mm -hmm. And uh, I learned all the police codes. I never used any of them, but just the fact that I knew them mm -hmm. did uh, really help me in a in a strange way. Hmm. You know, so uh, and that's another thing I tell young actors. Um, well, I'm a young actor. You know, mm -hmm. I act like I'm like sis, like 78. Like that's what I tell young actors. <coughs> I'm getting water. No, but uh, um, really understand the character and like that was fun to me. It was fun learning the police codes. It was fun. Um, going into a squad car and asking questions like, "What does this do? What does this button do? What does this button do?" Mm -hmm. You know. So, uh, and it, and that, that so that's how I prepared. I prepared very mechanically mm -hmm. for this character, and emotionally, a lot of the stuff that I learned from Detroit, that's what I used. In the film, there are uh, the two main detectives are narc narcotics detectives, and they work in uh, narcotics. And I was speaking to a narcotics detective. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was, uh, after I'd do the ride along, I'd go across the street to the narcotics uh, headquarters mm -hmm. and just pick his brain and ask him questions. And I was like, so why, why are you a narcotics detective? You know, you, why narcotics? And he's like, because it's fun. Really? Yeah. And then I was like, that was the last answer I was expecting, you know, and... Uh, it made me learn a lot about my character, so I made sure in every scene what I was doing was fun. Okay. I found a fun activity for my character to do. Even though we're chasing after uh, a certain suspect, mm -hmm. I would try to find joy in doing that. Mm -hmm. You know, whether it's 
um, make dry cleaning my jacket the day before set and just walking around in a clean jacket because I'm like, oh, look at this clean jacket. Or um, like very, very minuscule things that uh, did a lot for me actually in the scenes. Was there, as far, when you were riding along, did anything happen that you can talk about? Um, uh, the reason why I'm asking, I've done ride alongs before. Oh, you have? I ended up in court, like seriously. Oh, you went in court? <laughs> Girl, what did you do? I witnessed something. So, oh, you witnessed something? Yes, oh, man. Yes. So, oh, that's terrible. Yes, it was. So I yeah. just, I'm just curious. Did anything happen to you? I mean, I was... All right, the, <laughs> it's not my interview. It's yours. Let's no, go. No, 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 no. <laughs> the, the police ride along that I did was... Uh, the, the Were really boring. Really? They were very boring. Like, this, this, this guy was a sergeant. And he was like, all right, cool. So, uh, you ready? Mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah, I'm ready. And he goes, all right, cool. So he picked me up. Yeah. And uh, well, we went to the car and then he goes, all right, so we're gonna wash the car first. Mm -hmm. So we went to a car wash, we washed his car. Then afterwards he goes, all right, man, uh, I'm kind of exhausted, you want some coffee? Oh my so God. So then we go get some coffee. And donuts? Uh, no. no, just coffee. <laughs> and then as we got a coffee, like three other police officers pull up to uh -huh. the scene with their sealant missile. You know what I mean? Like they uh -huh. pulled up, all three of them in, in, into the coffee shop and they're all drinking coffee. But they all rolled together. So you would think that, oh, my God, there's like a drug bust going on. Right. But they're all drinking coffee, and they're like, yeah, man, I mean, Carol, like, dude, she's she's really hot, though, right? And, like, drinking coffee. Wow. You know? And so um, I'm like, cool. So after that, he was like, all right, cool. So we got an assignment. And yeah. uh, so we went to a hotel, and the assignment was in the parking garage. One of the arms uh -huh. landed on a car. Yeah. And uh, the police officer didn't write down the proper statement. Mm -hmm. So we had to go there to write down the statement. <laughs> that was like the police work. And then he was like, yeah, man, it's intense, isn't it? And I'm like, yeah, man, this is crazy. Man, this is insane, man. This is like Baghdad, you know? <laughs> See, it must, it's definitely different in Miami, so. <laughs> oh, yeah, right, exactly. So like, do you know this person? No? All right. Yeah. But yeah, yeah so, uh, but one thing he did do was like, it was like the couple of days it was really boring and we were just doing basic stuff. But uh, we were driving and he slammed the brakes. Mm-hmm. And he goes, where are we? And I was like, um, he goes, what way are we driving? And I didn't have an answer. And he goes, you always want to know what direction you're going, what street you're leading to. You always want to know where you are exactly. Mm -hmm. And he goes, no matter what happens. And I was like, oh, okay. Well, that's interesting. Yeah. So it's funny because it's like all these like mundane things we were doing, like mm -hmm. getting coffee and cleaning his car. Mm -hmm. And uh, like he something came out of that and like when he did that stop thing it really threw me off and made me really learn so i'm like maybe he did all this stuff just for that but he obviously didn't because right. he, he just met me right it's not like he cared about me that much you know because you know what i'm gonna do i'm giving the show the most boring day and then randomly slam my brakes and be like hey where, where are we at man i work at a nightclub <laughs> work at a nightclub a lot of Middle Eastern dudes at this nightclub. And they all smoke cigarettes indoors. Like they just. So this dude was smoking a cigarette indoors, and my boss is like, yo, Paul, you're Middle Eastern. Tell the dude to put out the cigarette. <laughs> like he thought we had a connection and we'd make out or something. But I don't know. He's just. <laughs> but think about Middle Eastern people, they use their language barrier to get themselves out of problems. They do it all the time. So I, I go up to this dude smoking a cigarette. I'm like, hey, man, uh, you can't smoke cigarettes in the club. The guy's like, yes, yes, he could. I'm like, no, sir, you can't smoke cigarettes in the club. It's illegal. You got to smoke outside. Yes, yes, outside. Yes, smoke. <sighs> yes, it's a nice club, isn't it? I'm like, no, sir, I know the ambience is great, but you can't smoke cigarettes in here. You have to actually put it out and go outside. Oh, you want a cigarette? Hey, give him a cigarette. <laughs> but by the time we're done having a conversation, he smoked his cigarette, you know, so he got over on me. <laughs> A Middle Eastern dude would be the worst person behind the counter to rob a bank from, because he just used that, you know what I mean? A dude will walk into a bank like, all right, if you move, you die. Hey man, give me all your money. Dude's like, yes, money, yes. <laughs> Brother, I don't think you understand. I got a loaded weapon. I need the money now. Yes, yes, it's hard, yes, money. Money is difficult, yes, yes. He goes, man, if you don't put this money in the bag, I'm gonna kill you. 
Oh yes, you want a cigarette? Hey, give him a cigarette. You want to smoke? It's... But by the time they're done having a conversation, he's arrested. You know what I'm saying? It's just... Aside from acting and producing, you're also a comedian. Mm -hmm. And I've seen some of your, your comedy. Have you? I have. Yeah. One in particular called What the Funny. Right. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Which one not? Tell us, how did you get involved with What the Funny? A friend of mine, uh, his name is Jahan Jones. He's, um, he does a, uh, he's a great filmmaker, great actor and comedian. He started working with What the Funny mm -hmm. as a uh, producer of their Vine channel. Mm -hmm. And uh, he invited me to uh, uh, join the Vine team. Mm -hmm. And uh, Vine are six second videos that uh, people shoot and uh, takes up a lot of time. And a lot of kids are on it and they should be studying. They should be eating vitamins, but they're shooting Vine videos. Anyway. No. <laughs> uh, so uh, we started shooting Vines and uh, I, um, you know, Mar uh, Marlon Wayans, it's his website, and uh, there's actually a show that was on TBS. It was uh, called Funniest Wins. Mm -hmm. uh, what the Funny was uh, sponsoring that TV show. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I got involved with the show and I was involved with the website, and I started uh, writing material for them and writing vines and shooting vines. And uh, um, so that's how I got involved. Hmm. It's great. You're also a producer as well. Yes. I. I am. You are. And, and, uh, <laughs> I'm like, wait, am I? <laughs> yeah. And uh, you just produced um, Mentor as well. Yes. Tell us, tell us about that. Uh, Mentor is a, uh, it's a web series that I wrote with a comedian named Jason Stewart, a very funny comedian, and uh, it stars him and Alexandra Paul, mm -hmm. who are both in uh, the film Dirty. Mm -hmm. And it's about an older gay comedian who meets a younger straight comedian and uh, they become friends and start helping each other. How did you come up with the concept for Mentor? Well, actually, it's the relationship that I developed from meeting Jason Stewart, who's the main character mm -hmm. on, uh, in the web series. Um, I met him at a... Uh, I met him at a... What the hell was it? That was one, a one-man show. Okay. I met him at a one-man show, and um, I thought he was a good dude, and he seemed very friendly, and then uh, I asked him for coffee, and this is when I first came out to LA and I just wanted to meet people and network. So I met him and we had coffee and um, he thought I was into him. And uh, those uh, very false uh, assumptions. Okay. And um, so he kind of agreed to be friends with me even though that uh, I won't let him have sex with me. So uh, uh, we became friends. <laughs> and uh, through being friends, I just, I started learning so much about him and about his life. and. If you look at us on paper, we're two totally different people. Mm -hmm. You know, the life that he had and the life that I had were two totally different lives. And we were able to uh, become friends. Mm -hmm. And a lot of, uh, I would say, the um, binding, you know, the thing that uh, binded us together was comedy and uh, acting. And uh, so we thought of this idea to write a television show about ourselves. And uh, so that's what Mentor's about. Where are you from exactly? I'm from Detroit. And you have a your ethnic background. What where are you? What are you? Uh, I feel like there's an episode of Homeland right now. <laughs> You're like, what are you? <laughs> so what do you know about these bombs outside? <laughs> yeah. um, uh, my ethnicity is called Chaldean. Okay, so can you tell our viewers a little bit about that? Have there been any difficulties as far as pursuing your career in acting and comedy? Um, with being Chaldean? Well, uh, being Chaldeans, uh, pretty much uh, we're Catholic Arabs from Iraq. Uh, I like to compare us to white running backs. There's not too many of us out there. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we're like straight theater majors. You know, there's like 300 in the world. And uh, um, so Chaldeans were, uh, my family's from Iraq, mm -hmm. and uh, Chaldeans are uh, uh, the indigenous people of Babylon. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're very similar to Assyrians. And uh, I talk about this a lot. My family's from Iraq, uh, but I was raised in Detroit. Mm -hmm. So my family left Iraq to start a life in Detroit. And I always felt that was a lateral move. You know, they just... <laughs> uh, it, it is definitely a struggle because my parents, they don't really understand uh, the business. They don't really understand uh, the level of difficulty. And my dad's just like... You know the the movie with uh, Denzel Washington, where he's like boom, like killing people like this. Why can't you be in it? Just do it. 
I'm like, yeah, Dad, it's a, it's a process and uh, it's hard to get those auditions. Well, th then don't do it. You know, like, that's just mm -hmm. like reasoning, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know they love me and uh, they just don't uh, really understand the business. And a lot of Chaldeans for that, uh, uh, for that reason, you won't see a lot of them pursuing a career in entertainment. Uh, a lot of my relatives are all doctors, lawyers, and very uh, stable uh, occupations. I see. But, um, you know, it was difficult to leave my family, but the first time I got on the airplane was to come to California. Mm -hmm. And that was three years ago. And uh, I just, I'm really passionate about what I do, and um, I have no intentions of stopping, so. What advice can you give anyone that's pursuing acting and comedy? Both? Either. Man, I'd say you yeah. got to be really talented, man, to do both. I mean, it ain't easy, you know? Where can we find you? Where can we find you, uh, social media-wise? How can viewers follow you? Uh, I'm on uh, Instagram, Facebook, uh, paulalaya123. That's my Twitter and Instagram handle, and uh, paulalaya, E-L-I-A. It's on uh, Facebook, uh, Foursquare, Tumblr, Yelp, uh, LinkedIn, uh, Black People Meet. Um, Spot. Well, thank you for being here, Paul. Oh, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you. We're looking forward to seeing you on Dirty. Yeah, me too. And this has been a segment of... Uh, City Beat Live. On the Prime TV Network. It's LA Film Fest, Blackjack Rally, My Media Muse, and special thanks to Prime TV Network.